Hey, what's going on there folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Sunday night. Uh, it is July 9th, 2023, about 10.37 p.m. here uh, in the state of California. Latest quake activity shows a 1.0 into the region of California. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Looks like that one pointer coming into the uh, geyser area. Let's see, Clear Lake Volcanic Field out here. Been watching a pretty good swarm of activity here. Looks like for the most part, uh, all the microquake activity is just that, uh, below the 2.5 threshold it looks like here on the map. All right, uh, zooming out of here, got a little bit of movement kicking back up here across the Lake Almanor region, 2.2 uh, and a 1.8 from earlier uh, today. So things still kind of kicking up there. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. A handful of smaller quakes across the region there of Washington. And over here around Montana, things a little on the active side. We did see that 3.0 early this morning in Ennis, Montana. Uh, I don't believe that's affected any of the activity there across Yellowstone. So let's go ahead and zoom in, just double check. There is that three-pointer showing up pretty nicely on the seismograph stations there. You can see that, uh, this little reading right here. Uh, but for the most part, uh, let's see, activity at Yellowstone remains quiet. No earthquake swarms, no doom and gloom on the map uh, let's see let's not skip california i always tend to make that little loop and it's like okay we got to go back here look it's kind of like a horseshoe loop uh far as the rest of california goes uh, a little bit of swarm well i can't really say swarming but a little activity here across the imperial fault did see a handful of earthquakes here throughout the afternoon some smaller quakes below the 2.5 threshold but uh, a little bit uh, also up here on the southern end, the very southern end of the San Andreas Fault, seen a 1.1. i got to watch that. If we start seeing this swarming in a big fashion, then uh, I would say, hey, this thing's getting ready. But uh, for now, just a little bit of smaller earthquake activity occurring uh, there on the plate boundary. Uh, over here around Oklahoma, let's see if we got anything new throughout the afternoon. Most of it uh, looks like that's all small microquake activity. The last one, a 2.3 there. Uh, outside the El Reno, Oklahoma area. Most of the rest of the country there, pretty quiet. Uh, some Puerto Rico activity stirring up, it looks like. A couple twos, upper twos, and even some threes kicking off here around the British Virgin Islands there. Somewhat deep. Got to watch this region here. Very capable of producing a uh, significant size quake. Been a while. Uh, South America region not showing too much activity. You see what's being reported here on the globe. Uh, definitely seen a handful of smaller quakes there from the EMSC. Same with the Middle America Trench here up and down the, the uh, plate boundary showing some activity. Um, can't really tell here on the map, but it's definitely there across the region. That's kind of why uh, Southern California was uh, kicking up a little bit. Um, but mostly, mostly smaller microquake activity. All right, uh, across the Alaska region. Let's see if we've got anything above the... 2.5 threshold. Not a lot. Uh, a couple smaller, uh, well, I should say a couple earthquakes above the 2.5 here into the area of southern Alaska and around the Aleutian Trench. Seen uh, some further activity, so slight elevated movement here across the region. Getting a swarm out here around Japan once again, uh, just off the coast here of Tokyo. Gotta watch this. The latest one shows a 4.9 into the uh, Japan Trench there. That also shown up on the EMSC globe. A little bit of activity further south into the Izu uh, Trench as well. See that little separate swarming. This is definitely a good in indicator here of uh, well pressure up against the Philippine Plate. It's going to be this area right here. Uh, and in general, uh, the western western portion here of the Pacific Plate showing some uh, uh, some definite movement. When you get a couple different swarms like that, that's a uh, telltale sign of uh, some impending pressure out here in the region. Continue to watch that. Of course, we've had a pretty good swarm around Taiwan as well. Quite a few fours there from uh, today and then also yesterday. Seen some activity as well. Got about nine earthquakes of at least 4.0 and above. The EMSC globe here. Uh, still shows some smaller quake movement across the uh, Philippines and into the Indonesia Islands area. That includes areas around the Java Trench northward uh, off the coast of Sumatra. Did see a 5.7 there earlier 
uh, this morning uh, near the northern Sumatra area, about 54 kilometers deep. We're looking at a little bit of aftershock activity following that movement. A uh, slight little swarm up here across the plate boundary bend. That's going to be this little sharp uh, curve up here. Not showing up on the USGS map, but some smaller quakes there uh, just outside the uh, the uh, Myanmar area, it looks like. Not a whole lot going on through the rest of the uh, world. Let's see what we got here on the EMSC model. Mostly uh, twos and threes. A little bit of activity here across the... Um, region of Turkey and also the Aegean Sea. This is where the activity is occurring there on the globe. Smaller quake activity though. Um, Iceland did have a five pointer earlier. That got downgraded it looks like to a 4.9. Uh, the 4.9 is actually being reported by the EMSC while the USGS holding steady on a 5.1. Uh, that earthquake coming into that region that has seen quite a bit of swarming here over the last few days with um, you know, volcano activity starting to pick up over there into the Iceland region. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, aside from that, looks calm. Let's see if we got anything else going on here. One earthquake, a couple earthquakes, smaller quakes there um, on the globe. 2.0 coming into the Alaska area right now. Uh, far as down south into the Kermadec Trench. Did see some activity as well with a uh, five-pointer. Looks like a 5.0 coming in earlier uh, this afternoon into the trench region, about 31 kilometers deep. Now it looks like we did have some activity further down south, 3.1, uh, just off the north coast here of North Island. Um, Let's bring up the uh, GeoNet servers here and see what's going on. Uh, let's see, there's that, well, 3.7, 17 hours ago, but we're looking for that movement uh, that shows recent activity here around North Island. Uh, quite a few twos, there's a 2.5, I wonder if that was it. 2.8, 4.3, that's way up along the Kermadec Trench, so hard to say. 3.7, seven hours ago. Um, I just tend to look at the earth, these uh, earthquake drums and just get a good representation of what's going on out here along with the location of that seismograph station there in the red dot. So kind of cool to see. Um, as far as local seismic activity goes here across New Zealand, it's, it's awfully quiet. Not a whole lot going on. A couple smaller quakes as expected there along the plate boundary but nothing major going on there across New Zealand for now. Uh, definitely want to watch this area up here around the uh, Philippine plate and the western areas here of the Pacific Ring of Fire for some uh, some movement. It's all kind of pointing towards that. We'll continue to watch that of course. Uh, 2.7 coming in right now to the Puerto Rico area. Uh, again this is the combination of the USGS and the EMSC data so it's a little cluttered on here. Uh, that might be past the 24 hour period just kind of uh, bring it down slightly don't want to keep the globe too cluttered but also i want to show uh, areas of interest in terms of uh, increased seismic activity uh, hawaii let's see a couple twos going on out there in the middle of the pacific a little bit around the kilauea volcano as well a uh, handful of them as far as the latest informational statement there goes from the hands notification system uh, the last one on Kilauea was uh, they still show daily update this should actually be a weekly update because that's kind of what they're that's kind of what they're doing that was from about four days ago uh, doesn't look like any major changes going on there across the area for now we did have an M flare peak out here just a short while ago um, that was a uh, area right here. Peaked out at about M2.2, it looks like, far as the uh, peak levels go. From uh, a sunspot up here on the northern section, I believe it was from this area right here or one of these sunspots. We're currently flaring, though, right now um, down here on the southwestern quadrant. Very active in terms of activity currently 
Uh, let's see here. Yeah, they, they don't have uh, any mentioned flares on here, but that was a M2.2, I believe, uh, from that sunspot area up here. Looking at the magnetogram image here, shows that regional sunspot up here. A little bit of uh, complexity going on within it. Could harbor a little bit of more, a little bit more potential for some uh, flaring. Uh, the sunspot area that's currently flaring is down here amongst these areas, and this is fairly dynamic it is growing obviously and uh, getting somewhat unstable so we'll continue to watch that area of the sunspot um, and our big one over here this massive one's kind of getting a little bit of uh, lopsidedness here in the core looks like this area of the magnetic fields taken over while the rest of it is somewhat disintegrating but we'll continue to watch that and see how uh, that plays out I don't think that's our main threat, um, but we'll definitely watch that here as it is uh, starting to rotate into the Earth-directed view. Again, that sunspot region down here flaring slightly, somewhat Earth-directed, but that will be uh, obviously facing away from the Earth here in the coming days. Looks like a 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 35, X flare around the 1% range. Not really seeing any major aurora forecast coming up. I there was a article on um, uh, KFOR, I believe, and they stated about um, a solar storm coming on Thursday. Uh, that's news to me. I didn't know we had a major solar storm coming towards us. They said that uh, it'd be visible down into the uh, the lower 48. I don't know where they're getting their information from, but far as uh, any forecast goes, I, I don't see anything. We didn't have any massive CMEs or directed. So I'm, I'm thinking it was maybe a mix up. Um, maybe getting some old information out there. Even the uh, uh, spaceweather.com site here doesn't show anything about uh, a coming solar storm. Uh, unless this is something nobody knows about until it happens. But yeah, that, that was off of uh, uh, KFOR, their uh, social media page. Um, let's see here. Increasing chance of flares. I'm not for sure how new this article is. It all looks like it was put out a couple days ago here, so... It's an up and down pattern though, folks, with uh, the flaring. You know, it's, it's, uh, they come and go. Some beautiful sunspots, but also at the same time, uh, the majority of them are stable. Not all of them, but majority is definitely, uh, uh, stable. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Storm Prediction Center. I don't think we got anything major going on tonight. Uh, looks like a little thunderstorm activity. Uh, this is showing for tomorrow, uh, Monday, July 10th. A little bit of activity stirring up out here across the region. Slight activity for uh, severe weather. 2% up north into uh, Nebraska, it looks like. Not a whole lot of uh, severe weather threats, but it's a broad area. That's for sure. I wish we had some of that coming up on the west coast, but unfortunately... We have <clears throat> we have a massive high pressure system we're going to have to deal with here. Um, let me show you guys what's coming up. I'm not liking it one bit. Uh, right now we've had cooler temperatures. In fact, it only got up to about eighty, about eighty-seven today here around Chico. That's actually way below normal. Uh, for this time of year but as we put things into motion here we got a uh, a deep heavy low pressure or not low pressure i wish it was low pressure but ridging high pressure over here along the west coast that's really going to cook us as we head into um late next week and into the weekend it doesn't look like it's going to last long but it's going to be hot we got some very hot temperatures coming up here around the uh, chico area on these days let me show you guys here real quick. Um, temperatures. We already got that on there. 
So we're going to go to about Friday. We're supposed to be in the mid-90s for the most of the week here, but it looks like on Friday is when we're going to start cooking out here with temperatures again. Close to 110 out here around where I live. Cooler down here if you live near the bay, but this is just getting, it's going to get hotter on the weekend. Check this out. Um, as we head towards Saturday, um, we're talking about highs here in the valley. Again, above 110 degrees. We just had that, um, oh, when I was out in Texas, so it looks like I have to deal with it this time. We didn't see 115 out in Texas, but while I was out there, this is what was happening here in California. Uh, and then Sunday as well, uh, looks like 115, 115 degrees, right? You think this is Death Valley, but uh, it's not. It's uh, the Sacramento Valley. And unfortunately, it's just going to get hot. So, um, and it looks like it could be muggy too. I don't see any dominant north wind pattern. That would be dry air. Um, humidity levels. This is showing down to about 7% or so. That would be awesome if it was. But last time this model showed uh, this type of setup as well. But it was like humidity in the low 40. So when it was 110 out... It made it feel like 125 uh, here around the Willows and Chico area. So I'm not really, it'd be nice if we had low humidity. Obviously, it's going to feel a lot cooler, uh, even with those extreme temperatures compared to humidity values that make that heat index go up. But uh, unfortunately, the heat is coming. The next 10 days of activity, look at that ridge out here. This is very typical here. In the summertime in California and uh, we are gonna cook not seeing whole much uh, not seeing too much moisture out here for the Texas area over the next 10 days unfortunately uh, but up north into the plains central plains northern plains Midwest eastern portion of the country all getting that typical pattern ridging troughing right you got that ridging building up and a jet stream coming down uh, interacting with that moisture there from the Gulf and you get all these rainstorms and whatnot but well you know that's that's what it is this is typical for California unfortunately uh, as far as hurricane activity goes um, let's see what we got here for the um, the western Atlantic areas this is the Gulf of Mexico here we're gonna just kind of scoot this into view and see if we have anything most of the time um, during the El Nino patterns, they tend to stay away from the Gulf. Uh, but I heard the, the temperatures out there are quite warm in the uh, Gulf region. A little bit warmer than normal. I'm not really seeing anything uh, developing out here in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, which is good news, of course. All right, folks, I am going to call it a night call it the end of the weekend got monday coming up tomorrow some areas it's already monday goodness uh, we, we we got our member drawing coming up here too as well on um let's see so that's going to take place on saturday that'll work out that'll definitely work out so we'll do the uh, member drawing on saturday make sure you guys are signed up uh whether you're gifted memberships or you're you know the uh, um paying member on here so make sure you guys uh, get in on the action here this weekend we'll be uh, giving away some prizes to the lucky winners for now i'm gonna jump off here stay safe got a little earthquake here on the uh garlock fault shear zone just coming in within the last few minutes to hatchapi mountains catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow morning Peace out.